Hey there guys and welcome. This is another studio segment for Airgun Expo. That's what it is, Airgun Expo 21. Forgive me, it's been a long day. You've said that a lot of times today. I have said it. You would figure that I would have it down pat. Angie, how's your day been today? Pretty awesome. What did you like? It's been fun. Well, we'll you know, save uh, that. Let's say that. let's save that for <laughs> later. Right now we're here to talk about gamo air guns, specifically the swarm guns. But before we do that. We got a wind shear coming through. But before we do that, I want to thank our sponsors. We have Gateway to Air Guns, which really big part of making all this happen. If you want to know more about air guns, uh, if you're new or old to the sport and want to hang out with some great air gun folks, www.gatewaytoairguns.org. And also Air Guns of Arizona, which is a main event sponsor for this event. So thank you to all of those guys. Air Guns of Arizona is www.airgunsofarizona.com. So this episode here is brought to you by Gamo USA, and they have some killer brake barrels oh, yeah. um, and some killer PCPs too. Mm -hmm. um, they have something that really other people have tried. They just haven't done it nearly as well as Gamo has done it, and that is to put a magazine feeding system on a brake barrel air gun. So I don't have a regular brake barrel up here because why would you when you have this? Um, but in the old day, you would cock the gun, uh, get it all the way hanging down, grab a pellet, stuff it in. Do you want to shoot again? You go through that same process you know, every time you want to shoot. Hopefully you load it perfectly with the skirt behind in the back and not in the front. <laughs> Yes, but you know, in, at night that may actually happen. But anyway, <laughs> in the dark, trying to chase something around the yard. Um, but they came out a few years ago, the Swarm system. And basically what we have is a 10-shot magazine. And that drops just like that. And now when I cock this gun, there's a little pellet pusher that pushes the pellet into the breech. And it has, I said, 10-shot. And it's got a number right on the top. So it's easy to track how many shots you got going. Yep. And you just got pellets on tap. If you want to take more shots, if you have a pocket full of pellets, you just are pocket full of magazines, you're good to go. Pop it out and put another one in. Yeah, it's rapid, rapid, rapid. So if you like to hunt tree, tree squirrels or, you know, we call them tree rats. If you want to hunt squirrels or iguanas, I would imagine these would be phenomenal for iguana hunts. All that kind of stuff. Or just plink in the backyard and see how fast you get knocked down all the targets. The Swarm system does just a better job than every other system I have tested, just period. Um, Angie, I know you like it for the same reason. Is there anything else you love about the Swarm that I missed? Um, I don't know, Rick. Okay. Well, and I'm just keep talking. Well, I know there a lot of um, break. These are actually pretty light, generally, and yep. that's important to me. I, I use these squirrel hunting. I mean, we went to the Gamma Squirrel Master Classic. Yep. It was awesome, and I had the Maxim. Yep. Um, others had the Magnum, but that's a two-hander for me, so I had the Maxim. But it's super light just to carry it around the woods for hours. Yep. No big deal at all. And to ha like you said, have the extra mags on hand. You're finished with one, you pop another one in. I mean, the squirrels aren't going anywhere. It is awesome. I do love that part about it. Uh, now, they have had some generational changes. So we've done the basic swarm, then we have the swarm fusion 10X Gen 2, and then they've actually adopted that system over it. Now, the big difference you're gonna see is if you notice this right here, uh, there are no open sights. Right. Okay, so the original swarm system had a magazine that dropped in like this, and when you cocked the gun, it stayed in this position, it just dropped in front of the breech and the pellet pusher pushed the pellet in. Well, that did mean that you lost your open sights, and Gamo, had always been known to have some really good open sights. I don't know if you've ever used their True Glow sights, but I always found them to be really, really good. I have because I generally shoot the gun open sighted before I mount a scope. All right, so that was awesome to have the open sights. Mm -hmm. When you went to this, you lost them. Now they went, let me, here, I'll trade you to the Fusion. Let's do that, your favorite gun you have there. Um, so this is the Fusion. Uh, they brought back the open sights, but in order to do that, they had to create a way for the magazine to lay flat. Okay, mm -hmm. hand me one of those mags, would you? And this is empty. Drop that in here like this. Now, when I cock this, that mag rotates into that uh, vertical position, and then that lines it up for the pellet pusher to drive the pellet into the breech. So you have that action going on. There you go. And now that gave you back 
your open sights, and it also reduced, you know, this has got some pretty tall range to have the clearance there. It got this at a more traditional height yep. as well. So all of that was way better. Then they came out with the Magnum. Um, and I got to tell you, the Magnum is one of my favorite guns just because of the sheer power it puts out. And of course, power without accuracy, so accuracy is sort of worthless. It has some great accuracy too. It's a 50 yard gun and a brake barrel. And now you have a 50 yard brake barrel that's multi-shot. Yep. So we're talking, you know, up to, depending on what pellets you're running, 25, 26, 27 foot pounds. That's a lot of energy. The guys are out there um, playing with their air guns. That's a lot of energy uh, to have on tap. It's just um, a lot in a brake barrel, for sure. Yeah, my son claimed the one I have, the Magnum. Uh, yeah. Little, little Lee? Yep, he says, that's my gun, Mom. Now, what they've done, and we were playing with this today, and I didn't have all the details, but we've done a little more testing from our shooting session this morning to this afternoon. And I noticed something because we were shooting the Magnum, we shot the Fusion, and we shot the new Bone Collector, mm -hmm. second generation, Gen 2, whatever. Uh, and I thought, wow, that's doing more power than yeah, I remember. we shot them each over the crony. And we, this was doing like 680-ish or 675-ish, and this one was doing 750, 750 and this was doing like 850, 860. Mm -hmm. Now we were all, we were shooting the 14.5. Um, um, Red Fires. Thank you, the 14.5 Red Fires. And again, these are all 22 caliber. So when you start looking at those velocities and then you start doing the math, we got like 13 foot pounds, mm -hmm. 18 foot pounds, 23, 24 foot pounds. Yep. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I remember the old, um, the old hunter, bone collector, excuse me, the old bone collector, brain went side, sideways, the old bone collector did what for energy? You shot it a little 600. bit ago. About 600, okay, yep. and that is, we didn't do the math, but that's probably 12, 13 foot pounds in that area. Yeah, maybe a little less. Uh, it it, like it that, is, yeah. it does, it, I was like, gosh, I don't remember it's shooting that hard, but you meant, you saw it immediately, you said, you know, that gun's different. Mm -hmm. and it's, my, had, it's my favorite gun. It is. I know this gun. And she picked this up, this one's different, and she's right, it's thicker, it's meatier, the stock is beefier, it's actually, I think, a higher end gun. Oh, yeah. Um, than the original bone collector. And what I believe where we've got the differences here is I haven't pulled out my micrometers, but I think they put a bigger uh, air cylinder in this mm -hmm. or a compression cylinder. Now, when you do that, you can actually have the same ram, but because you have more volume, you're going to get more energy. Okay, so this has limited volume, smaller compression tube. I'm pretty sure, and believe me, I know you guys will correct me if I'm wrong, but just looking at it, this looks at least a few mils bigger. I agree. And at that point, uh, you've got more volume. That's where you're getting your more energy. But what they didn't go up in was the cocking force. It's still super easy to cock. Yep. So it's easier to cock, more power. And this is what you get out of the box. You get the scope. You get the magazine. We'll talk about the difference in the magazines here in a minute. But I shot this today and was like, okay, I see what they did here. This is pretty impressive. Just a really solid... Um, sporting brake barrel. Love it very, very much. So. Well, and at 20 yards, we were hitting the K9 outdoor targets every time. Right. It was very, very mm -hmm. cool. Um, so the magazines, they do have some different magazines. Um, the old magazine, which is this one, um, is here, here you go. Uh, that just drops in. So the new magazines they have, they have two different kinds <coughs> that work with the Gen 2. Um, they have their standard, just regular mag, which actually has a spring in it. So you load your pellet and you, you kind of manually rotate it to the hole, you drop your pellet in, and every time you drop another pellet in, it, that's where it stops. Your pellet becomes your mag stop. Yep. So when you shoot it, it pushes the pellet pusher through the hole, then it flips to the next pellet. So you're ready, but it, you, you have that potential of double feeding. Okay, you actually did a video showing what happens if you do that. Yeah, the pellets split off yeah. and they go in completely different directions. And it can mess up your guns. You don't want to do that. Now, they came out with the inertia-driven mag, which has a, an advancing system. So it's got a ratcheting system, and it will not advance until it feels the recoil of the rifle. So you can't double feed. Even if you cock it again by accident, you're not going to double feed your gun, which is very cool. And if for, every, if for whatever reason, 
gets a little grime in there. It'll do, we're very dusty out here. <laughs> if you guys that have, that have visited us this week know exactly how dusty we are. Um, this can get a little kind of gritty. So I'll use silicone oil when I need to to get it to free up again. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't, I just bump my little button there and it switches right over. So yeah. you're not without the ability to shoot regardless, but you have that added level of safety so that you can uh, potentially not double feed your gun. That is to me very cool. But Gamble has more than the Swarm. They have some other great products. I got one right there and that one is brand new. I haven't really done much with it yet. I have, not that one. Well, you have shot a ton with the Urban. Um, I actually kind of deciding what I want to put on it. I don't know what scope I want to go because for such an inexpensive gun, and we're talking very, very affordable. I think some of the last pricing I saw, and maybe Sue can pull it up on GammoUSA.com, uh, is going to be in the $300 area, but maybe even less. I think it's under four. I'm not sure. But it's definitely under four. That I know for sure. We have a question. Yes, Sue. Do they still have the Squirrel Moss Classics, and are you going to use um, it? You know, they, they had it last year. They didn't have it this year. I don't know. I would love them to have an Iguana Master Classic, frankly. Awesome. I think that would be the kicker. If they could do something with Iguanas, um, I think that would be, and I hate to, you know, maybe have to fly to Puerto Rico just because it's hot. <laughs> just, just, I, I remember going one time uh, on an iguana hunt, and I asked them, so when does it cool off down here? They sort of laughed at me. Uh, it is this cool. I'm like, okay then. Um, so, uh, but, but not in place of the Squirrel Master Classic, because that's a blast. That is no, so much I, fun. I don't know. I, I, I'm sour on the Squirrel Master Classic, if I'm going to be honest. I, you know, you have so many years you lose by one point, you go, oh. Man, that's tough. That's a tough one. I just tough like to take. the experience yeah. going out there shooting squirrels. It is fun. Yeah. And with dogs, that was my first time doing that. It's a blast. Yeah. It is a blast. I would imagine uh, it's a big deal for them, more so because it's really about the children, the kids, the 4-H four four H, yep. four shooters that come out. And it, it's a really a reward for them for doing so well. And so I would imagine they'll keep doing it, but I don't know. Yeah, who, I guess we'll find out. And if they invited me, I would absolutely go. So I'll me still too. run around the woods. I know Angie will be there. She'll probably show up early. Uh, <laughs> and what we all to do is really show up early and go do some scouting because those guys that live there really seem to know where to get 30 and 40 squirrels yes. in an afternoon. Where that's where I start wondering where the shenanigans are going on because we see 12 and come back with 10. And they're coming back with 40. I go, I'm not sure, fellas. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, Sue? Do they have iguana hunts in Florida? Well, there are iguanas that you can hunt in Florida. I don't know if any organized hunts there, but yes, there are. Or, or, iguanas are becoming a real problem there. Mm -hmm. yeah, Southern Florida. You know, when it got really cold in Florida, it rained iguanas because they could. <laughs> <laughs> they were cold blooded. They couldn't take it. They, <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I think the swarms would be great for that kind of oh, yeah. application. Rapid fire, you don't need to hunt PCP air. And people would ask me, what do I do for an air gun? And they're, they want to go PCP. Let's say they want to go PCP. All right, so the gun's going to be, let's just say they go with an affordable gun at $400. Yeah, like the Urban. It's, that's going to be way less than $400. But let's say, let's say $350. Then they need a way to fill it. So let's just say they go with an affordable filling hand pump at 100 bucks and you can get them for a lot more and some less so now we're at 450. now you still need a scope now it does come with an optic right, let's, let's just say they stick with a scope they're 450 all right you have to hand pump it which you love doing i know you that's part of your exercise regimen no she's saying no uh <laughs> and so you're into say 450 and you know you've you've got uh you got a lot of work every time you want to go take go to a hunt or go shoot anything or you take something i think this would be a great example of 18 foot pounds oh yeah i don't know what this price point is but it's probably less than 300 bucks i'm guessing um and we're going to be doing uh, really good power really good accuracy and uh pretty dynamite little gun yeah so and 10 shot mag mm -hmm. yeah uh great triggers on the guns i mean they're not fully adjustable, but they do have some adjustment. I find have no issue with the triggers. I think they have a decent pull. They're not real heavy, super smooth, and they're very predictable break. So 
I got no issues there. Um, the safety, I'm glad the safety is not automatic. We'll go back and forth on that. Some guns I like an automatic safety, um, but a gun like this, I can I can remember to go. Yeah, quick. I don't. I'm not one for an automatic safety. You I, prefer? Yeah, because you get used to it automatically doing it for you, and then you get a gun that's not automatic, and yeah, yeah. So I, I prefer a manual safety. Okay. Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up. If you want to know more about Gamo products, it's really easy. www.gamousa.com. Uh, they have a ton of great stuff. And remember, it's not just Gamo, it's Gamo Daisy. So if you have youngsters that want to get into shooting, nothing is better than a little Daisy rifle. They learn great control. They learn proper discipline as far as uh, shooting rules and, and, and safety guidelines. Just a great way to get youngsters into the sport. And then you can walk them up to this level. And then you can walk them up to the next level and the next level and so forth. So from toddler to retirement, uh, Daisy Gamo have the scope. I don't know of another company that has that depth uh, on the bench uh, of guns that can just take you from the very most basic to the you know to the extreme. So they have a huge line of products, including pistols and other things too. So just a great company. Go take a look at their stuff. www.gamousa.com. And thank you for watching, Aragon Expo. Angie, oh, we have a question. No, don't get told about tonight's opening. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to get to that. Thank you. Um, Sue was just reminding me we have tonight. What did you think of last night's roundtable? I thought it was fun. I learned a lot myself. The roundtable is a, is a cool thing. I really enjoy doing that. It's maybe not the most popular because we're not blowing something up. But I love it. I love talking to you guys out there, uh, fielding questions. and, and well, Like you said, there's a lot of experience sitting at that table ready is. and available for all of you out there who have questions yeah. to be answered. Absolutely. So we do that again tonight, starting at 7 o'clock Mountain Time. We have our first segment. And we're going to do it on YouTube. Um, and we may switch over everything to Facebook tomorrow. Uh, I'm still determining how that's going to work out. Um, that'll be a topic for tonight. We can talk about it. There you go. But tonight, besides our daily wrap, we're also going to have Pyramid Air in the house. So definitely, excuse me, definitely join us for that. So we'll, we should have Tyler, which I haven't talked to Tyler in a while. It'll be pretty cool. Guys, that's it. My name is Rick Utzer here with Ergon Webb for the Ergon Expo. I'm Ergon Angie. See you guys. Bye.